851, turn right, heading 180. The undisputed Queen of the Skies, the Boeing 747 series, has transported millions of passengers over the years and, in recent weeks, celebrated its 50th birthday. As the industry has seen advancements in technologies, the Boeing 747 series has also seen upgrades to make it more attractive to its customers. Today, with production having ceased on the 747-400, the new kit on the block, the 747-8, flies in our skies. Over the past 50 years, we've seen developments with the aircraft as mentioned, but what's the actual difference between the latest version, the 747-8, and the 747-400? In today's video, I'll explore just that, looking at the specifications, the uses of the two aircraft, and also the new features and or improvements found on the 747-8. We'll begin with a look at the Boeing 747 on a whole though. The Boeing 747, according to many, is the queen of the skies, and it gets its title through its journey to success. The 747 series isn't like your typical 787 or A330neo. The Boeing 747 started with an idea, and while that is similar to the aircraft I just listed, that idea was doubted by everyone. Supersonic travel or high-speed travel at the time of the 747's creation was the future according to many, and aircraft manufacturers at the time were exploring the possibilities of releasing aircraft that could fly at super speeds. These speeds would allow passengers to get from point A to point B quicker than ever before. So, when Joe Sutter put forward the Boeing 747, a big four-engined aircraft, it was instantly doubted. However, half a century on from that day, the 747 is still here, and has exceeded the life of many other aircraft variants, including that of high-speed aircraft. It's been an undisputed success, and one through its look, has resulted in being recognised at almost every single airport, even if no one has an interest in aviation. That's because everyone knows the jumbo. In late 2011, we witnessed the very first 747-8, Boeing's latest 747, take to the skies. However, this was actually the freight version. The passenger version, or intercontinental variant, took to the skies only six years ago in 2012 with Lufthansa. Since that day, the 747-8 on a whole has been heavily criticised, and I'll openly admit I'm definitely one of those people. The 7478 severely underperformed and did not reach the heights of what a lot of people were expecting, especially Boeing. Sitting on just under 50 orders, this total is substantially lower than expected. But in saying that, is there actually a difference in the 7478 to the 747400? From the exterior, the 7478 is an extended or stretched 747 if you will, with an added 20 feet or 6 meters over the Dash 400. In addition to this, the span of the aircraft is 11 feet more or roughly 4 meters more than the Dash 400. While the 7478 has its differences, Boeing didn't exactly want to market the aircraft like that. In fact, Boeing wanted to keep the 7478 not too different to the 747-400. It was important to Boeing that they kept with the 747's core design and didn't change it too drastically that the product, which was loved by so many, was simply gone. I'd be interested at this point to hear your thoughts. Did Boeing's will to keep the 7478 as similar as possible to its prior version result in it not performing as well? Or was it simply down to market demand and where the trends had moved to? Let me know. As I was saying though, the plan for the Dash 8 was to never make it too different. Boeing focused heavily on improving the technology on board, especially in the cockpit, and in addition, taking features from the 787 and implementing those onto the aircraft. In saying that, all these changes did not impact the flying style, and it was relatively easy to get used to for pilots who took to the skies with the 747-400. The new Intercontinental is 16% more fuel efficient, it has 13% lower seat mile costs, while also being 30% quieter for passengers on board, which is a huge bonus. The 747-8 is like any upgrade to an existing family of aircraft, and of course will have its improvements, and as we close the video, I'm going to take a look at the various specifications, but not going into too much detail to confuse you. I'll specifically focus on the range and a few other things. The 747-400 can fly for 13,490 kilometers or 7,285 nautical miles, 
while the newer 747A Intercontinental can fly for 15,000 kilometers or 8,000 nautical miles. So, in regards to the aircraft's range, the Dash 8 certainly has one up on the older Dash 400. In regards to the maximum takeoff weight, which is another important consideration when comparing the two, the Dash 8 once again is one up on the 747-400 with around 80,000 extra kilograms to play with. Another factor to take a look at are the freighter variants that come with these aircraft. Both the Dash 8 and the Dash 400 series of aircraft have a freighter variant alongside them, and the 7478 has been far more popular than the passenger variant. This is where I believe the 7478 can thrive in the future. The added capacity deals a big benefit to airlines who need it, as there is nothing else on the market that offers cargo airlines as much space as that on the 7478. This is especially after Airbus cancelled their A380F and don't look to be releasing a cargo aircraft of that size anytime soon. The 7478F, similar to the 7474-400F, is one of those aircraft which, sure, ages, but not as quickly as passenger planes. The Dash 8F, similar to the Dash 400F, has allowed cargo airlines an outlet for transporting large amounts of cargo in the one flight. And as we see the Intercontinental rapidly fade away in regards to orders, the cargo option is still going strong and will likely welcome new orders as the years go along. Ultimately, like most new variants, the 7478 is an improved 747-400. However, Boeing have stuck to their guns as best as they can and not rapidly changed the 747 series over time and kept it true to what it was, the queen of the skies. I'd like to thank you very much for watching this comparison video of mine. If you have any thoughts on either one of the aircraft, please don't hesitate to let me know in the comment section below. It's a great place to just start a general discussion about aviation, as people are more than happy to join in and give their thoughts as well. I'd like to thank you very much, and I do look forward to you all joining me in the next one.